Hi everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Sorry, we had a little bit of glitch there. Um, just uh, always obviously when working internationally. So uh, hi from Atlanta and I hope everybody's having a great Sunday wherever you're watching from. Uh, whether it's morning, um, lunchtime, afternoon, evening, or you are uh, woke up early or going to bed late. But anyway, welcome to this Cake Flicks um, video where I'm going to be showing you how to make the Vanilla Orchid. Now, Vanilla Orchids are one of the, obviously, thousands of varieties of orchid. And uh, this one is obviously actually where the vanilla bean comes from. So when you buy, um, obviously, real vanilla, um, like, for example, Nielsen Brassi, Massey brand that I use in pastry and in cake, um, that the vanilla bean has obviously little tiny vanilla uh, pods inside, which are the pod, and the little beans are little small like black pieces that you get in ice cream and obviously in uh, when you make cake and buttercreams and things like that. So obviously um, the uh, vanilla pod, all right, which is I'm going to be showing you is a green pod and then when it's dried, it obviously is where the beans come from. Now there are many varieties of vanilla orchid. If you actually do a Google search and you just put in vanilla orchid, you'll see the petal shape, the sepals, the petals, the throat vary, the color varies, because obviously there are also varieties of obviously different varieties of vanilla as well. You know, Madagascar, Tahitian, Mexican, you know, Indonesian. So there's many different. And of course, just like a lot of things, the bean shape will change a little bit depending on the variety. Like for example, the Tahitian ones are quite fat, uh, where obviously like the Mexican ones are not. So they vary a little bit in shape. And um, so I'm going to, uh, first of all, um, as I said, there's downloadable instructions. So on your um, when you have your on your download. So if you go to nicholaslodge.com, I think David and Paul have put that information up there. Just go to nicholaslodge.com. If you just click on the rest on the top uh, left hand side, a little button which is categories, just click on recipes and templates. And then you're going to scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the vanilla orchid. And it's a PDF, it's five sheets of paper. And you can download that, obviously, email that to yourself. You can download it. You can obviously put it in notes or print that off. All right. So if you haven't already done that, I did post that last night but if you haven't already done that, you can obviously do that after the demonstration. So anyway, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about the um, coming in here. And Scott's obviously operating the camera today, so we'll be coming in. So this is the vanilla orchid, all right? So beautiful orchid. And this would be really nice to use, like, for example, on a 50th wedding anniversary cake. You could obviously do this with gold ribbons. Here I've done this um, as a more natural orchid where I've actually got the vanilla bean here and obviously the aerial roots the flower and the buds and the leaves, which I'm going to show you. And these are actually the real vanilla beans here. So these are obviously what vanilla beans look like. These are some nice juicy Madagascar ones here. And so like, for example, in a vanilla bean paste, when you open that, you'll see the little tiny um, seeds in there, which come from the pod, okay? I'm just gonna pop that out of the way. Now, so in your instructions, so you have your instructions here. This goes through basically all of the wires and uh, what you need to make the orchid. And it then goes through the column, the throat. Um, and then we move on to the sepals and the petals and the buds. And then we move on to the leaves, the vanilla bean, the aerial roots. There is a diagram here. So in the diagram, this actually goes through um, the diagram of obviously the uh, assembly of the flower. And it also then goes through obviously some little diagram just to help you understand what I'm showing you. Um, on the very back page, there is also a template. This is the vanilla orchid cutter template. Now, um, the vanilla orchid, if you did a search on Google, like those of you in the UK, both Tinker Tech and Framar make the vanilla orchid is the same shape cutter. Um, so it is a sort of a standard cutter. Um, you can find this obviously online. And this is the actual orchid cutter. Okay, so these are the sepals. So that's the, the long sepal where you do one of those. So think of that like the head. And then the two smaller, slightly skinny sepals are like your two legs. So in an orchid, I always, when I teach this composition wise, think of it like a person. So if you're thinking of obviously like the head, the two arms and the two legs, that's the easy way to think of it. The three sepals or sepals are the head and the two legs and the two petals, which are basically closer towards you, are your two arms, all right? And pretty much all orchids are put together in the same way. It's just they always have this for their three sepals, two petals, but of course shape varies a lot, like the Phalaenopsis orchid is quite different. 
This is the two arms, which are the wing pedals, all right, a little bit like on a phalaenopsis, where we'll make one of these and we'll flip the cutter to make a matching pair. And this is your throat, all right? Now, um, so with the template, if you didn't have cutters, um, and just talking back to, like, for example, when I first started, um, you know, I've been in this industry for 42 years. And uh, so when I first started, there were no cutters, all right? So basically, sugar flowers in the UK 45, you know, 50 years ago were made using uh, a lot of the time just a little ball of paste on a wooden skewer with a pair of scissors. Um, very, very simple, all right? Um, it wasn't until quite late on in my career that obviously the range of cutters we have today became available. So I, what I used to do is I used to use a lot of um, options, like for example, a Coke can, all right? Whether you drink Diet Coke, regular Coke, doesn't matter. But uh, I just cut the Coke can out. So when this is actually from um, over 40 years ago in teaching classes. When I used to teach the dendrobium orchid, I used to make the little formers out of Coke cans, all right? Uh, now, obviously, we have other things that I use, but as I said, it's just fun for you to see this little bit of cake history, all right? Um, and so what you can do there is you can take the pattern, all right, so your pattern here, and then you can just use, like for example, like a scribe needle or a little tiny ball tool or even like a biro, a, a pen, go over that and it will just give you the design. And then you can just cut around that with a pair of scissors, all right? Um, and that will give you a nice permanent, um, obviously, a little mold and that you have template you can use for your pedals. An alternative is also to use, like for example, a stencil plastic. So if you just take, for example, like a a stencil plastic and you just or a piece of clear plastic like even a plastic thick folder and then you just cut around then you have a permanent pattern in sugar flower making i have actually made over 400 different varieties of sugar flowers in my career some of them only once uh, because when i teach internationally i'm a lot of times teaching native wild flowers from certain countries but in um, making sugar flowers, um, as I said, so you don't have cutters for everything. So using templates is something we sometimes do if you don't have the cutter available. All right, so you could easily make this pattern. Um, I'm also going to be using a size guide. Um, this is a teaching method that I've used for many, many years. And so when I measure the balls of paste for the buds, for the column, um, and the vanilla bean, I'm going to be using a size guide. If you don't have a size guide, which is part of uh, my, my teaching, as I say, method. So in uh, Flower Pro, you get size guides included. Um, and we also, in those of you in the United States, we do send those out with any order. But uh, you can go to, if you go to Google and you just type in um, Flower Pro downloadable size guide, um, you can print this off on cardstock. And then what I usually do there is I would just use like some hole punches and uh, you can use a hole punch and a pair of scissors and just cut around. And you could also laminate this as well. And when you cut the smaller holes, like number four is the size of a regular hole punch, but you can also get hole punches that are smaller, like these little tiny craft ones. So you see, you could actually use that to punch out the number one or a number two. All right, so there are, I have different sizes of these I use for different projects. But, uh, but as I said, you can also just cut around with like an X-Acto knife, a scalpel carefully. And as I said, you could laminate that or use some of the, uh, like the sticky back plastic. You use the contact paper used to cover books just to protect the front of it so it's not going to get, as I said, you can just wipe it clean. But it's a size guide. It's just a way I teach. Um, as I was saying uh, in some of my other Facebook Lives I've done, um, you know, I used to use vegetable associations. So when I used to live in England, I used to use Le Sur peas. I used to use Petit Pois pea. I used to use uh, like maraschino cherries, glacé cherries. Um, so when I traveled, I used to use different vegetables and bean association in the country I went to. And it was a little, it worked okay, but a little hit and miss. And um, many years ago, I did a book combination, video combination with Margaret Ford from the UK, where we did the sugar facts. And this is really where the size guide came into fruition. And I use this in all of my classes and videos and things. Um, so my students know exactly what size we start off with. Because when I started in this industry, it was very frustrating for me when I first made my first flowers at 10 years old. It just said, take a ball of paste. Well, how big is that ball of paste? So size guide is something I use in all of my teaching, uh, as I said, uh, techniques. Now I'm going to use, um, so we're going to start off by making the column. So we're going to use a 24 gauge white wire 
and uh, so I'm going to take a white wire. Now generally when you're making, um, for example, white or pastel colored petals or um, centers for flowers, I would always recommend white wire. Sometimes my students ask me, is it better to buy white or green wire? Generally speaking, white wire is more useful because you can put a white wire into a green leaf, but you can't put a green wire into a white petal, okay? Now we're going to take a 24 gauge wire, make a small 1 8 or 3 millimeter hook on the end of that. So just going to make a little tiny hook uh, on the end of this. So I'm just going to take my pair of uh, pliers, which were just here. There we go. So I just want a little tiny hook. So this is going to be, as I said, about three millimeters, or I don't know, but basically about one eighth of an inch. So it's just a little tiny hook and quite a squashed hook as well. All right. So it's about three millimeters, or as you can see, it's just about, as I said, about one one, um, sorry, one sixteenth of an inch, one eighth of an inch, okay? All right, so there we go. So that's gonna be your little tiny hook there, um, like so. And uh, we're going to use, uh, the color paste I'm using for the vanilla orchid is a cream color. Now, those of you in the UK, like for example, um, Rainbow Dust have a Pro Gel cream, uh, Sugar Flare have a cream. Um, here in the United States, um, we don't have a Pro Gel cream, but you could use like Americolor, have a color called gold, which is basically a cream color. You could also, if you don't have that sort of cream or a gold color, you can actually use ivory and a touch of yellow, all right? Because obviously ivory is a little bit brown, adding a little tiny, tiny bit of yellow will basically just give you that nice uh, rich color. Now I will be answering questions obviously after, um, because obviously you've got quite a lot to get through, but you can see how you have this, just this sort of pale cream color, okay? So it doesn't want to be too strong a color. Um, I use a lot of times when I'm dusting flowers in these sort of yellows and things, I will often start off with cream rather than uh, starting off with white because white's very stark. Um, when you make a flower in cream and then you dust it with yellows and colors like that, or sometimes even pinks, you're going to get a much sort of softer look for the whole flower. So we're going to take uh, here a number five size ball of paste. All right. So how we measure the si on the size guide is you measure on the size guide, this is a number four, a uh, five hole. So when you put it into the size guide, there is two thirds above and one third below the hole. All right, so this is actually how we measure a number five size ball of paste. So two thirds above, one third below. When we are using paste, um, now um, I'm using here Renshaw paste. Uh, the three paste I use or generally recommend that I know work really well is Renshaw's flower modeling paste or gum paste, my homemade Tylo's gum paste, um, which is a scratch or homemade paste, which you can also, when you go to download your vanilla orchid, there is the recipe there for it. And if you go to, um, as I said, YouTube and just put in Nicholas Lodge gum paste recipe, it's about 600 videos on there because a lot of people use my recipe. But I have one from my Craftsy, Blue, Craftsy Blueprint class that you can actually watch how to do that. Now, generally when I'm using my paste, all right, and then the other paste that um, I use and like as well is a starch-based paste is by Arati Mir from uh, Sugar In from India. And that's also a paste a lot of people are now using. And there's one for high humidity. So that works really well if you use a high humidity one, if you live in a humid area like we do. Um, so you're gonna take a little tiny bit of white fat or vegetable shortening. Now, um, in the UK, Trex is your main brand of white fat. Um, in the US, shortening, um, which we call shortening, is uh, sh Crisco. And you can buy Crisco in the UK, like in Tesco, some of the larger Tesco's and Tesco Online do have it. I do prefer Crisco over Trex. And the main reason is the melting point is higher, which means uh, Trex sometimes gets very oily on your fingers, whereas the Crisco stays a little bit firmer. It's more silky. Um, and I really like Crisco. Okay, so there's something that's available in the UK. Now, when you're working on paste and you're reading or you're getting some little balls of paste, just keep them covered with a little cup that just stops them drying. So once we've got to that stage, so we're then going to, so you've got number five, pale cream gum paste or flour paste, brush hook with egg white, insert into the paste, mold into a carrot shape, half an inch or 12 millimeters long. Now I'm gonna use egg white. Um, I've always used egg white. Uh, I, when I basically was worked, I was at school, at National Bakery School with Tombi Peck and Tombi Peck was the first person that really exposed me to making sugar flowers in this style. And Tombi always used egg white and uh, I've always used egg white. A lot of people use edible glue, so it's personal. Uh, this is a little, um, uh, actually for kids craft, it's a little uh, pot. So what's nice about it, if you don't fill it up to where it passed the line, if it tips over, you're not gonna lose your egg white or your edible edible glue in here. And I like this because when I use my paintbrush or when I dip a wire into there, you can actually just pull the excess egg off. Um, and this is something you can find, you know, obviously on uh, 
line here. So just gonna put a little tiny bit of egg white on there. And I keep my brush um, in a wet washcloth or flannel. This just keeps my, uh, to stop my brush drying out. So like when my students are working. But as I said, you're just working a little tiny, tiny bit of shortening into the paste. And what this is gonna do, it's just gonna massage the paste, it's gonna relax it. So as I tell my students, this is a little bit like having a glass of wine or two or a whole bottle at the end of a day or sort of something else to drink. You know, it just relaxes you, nice massage. Um, it helps to relax the paste so it's not stressed, okay? We're gonna take the hook and the hook is gonna go into the ball using a little cornstarch. Now, the cornstarch or corn flour, I have this in a little pouch. This is actually uh, in the US what we call a knee high or like in the UK, a pop sock. So what I've done there is I've just put about two tablespoons of corn flour, corn starch in the bottom. I twist it, I pull it back on itself and I've used little craft elastic bands to, uh, to have the top. This means you just get a very, very light dusting. You don't get too much. And if your fingers are a little sticky or your paste is a little sticky, you can also just literally just roll that into the corn starch bag, all right? So we're now gonna just roll this down. So I'm using my thumb and first finger, all right? So I'm actually holding them in a V shape. And I want to just come down here. So this wants to make approximately about a half an inch or 12 millimeter, all right? So this wants to be about half an inch or 12 millimeter, um, obviously column, okay? Now we're going to just flatten that very slightly. And then I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm going to pinch a little ear on one side little ear on the other side. It's a little bit like, almost like Mickey Mouse ears, but a little bit more on the side, okay? And then I'm also going to pinch the little head, which is gonna be at the top here, like so. And you can just take your little tool here. So you can use a toothpick, or this is like called my companion tool. You can just sort of emphasize that, but you get almost this shape, these three fins, all right? And then uh, this is gonna be like your head and your two ears. But, uh, and then you, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just pull the ears in, so you actually just fold the ears in like this. So you get this little hood, all right? And this is very much characteristic of most orchids. Now then, um, what I want to do is this bottom part here, I just want to extend that down now to about one inch or two and a half centimeters. So it's just gonna have a longer, just a slightly longer back. So you want this bulbous top, and then you want this to be a total length of approximately one inch or about 25 millimeters, okay? All right, so that is gonna be how we would do the uh, column of the orchid. Now that needs to dry uh, about two or three hours. Um, a lot of times I use a food dehydrator because a food dehydrator is going to dry this in 30 minutes. I just have it set on 115 or 45 degrees C and uh, pop it in the food dehydrator. Uh, I use a lot of food dehydrators for work when I'm working on videos and things, but also in classes as well to dry the students' pieces. All right, so this is obviously a dry one. So now we're gonna take some paste. Now, I've already pre-rolled this paste out, um, and so I've already got this rolled out. I am use a KitchenAid pasta machine, which actually, um, if Scott comes up a little bit, you'll see behind me here. So this obviously fits on my KitchenAid mixer, but you can also use a hand crank pasta machine. They do vary a little bit sometimes, uh, pasta machines. The KitchenAid one has eight settings, um, number one being thickest, number um, eight the thinnest. Some hand crank pasta machines have nine, uh, settings and some of them are actually like number one would be the thinnest, number eight or nine will be the thickest. So they do vary a little bit, but as I said, I'm just using a standard thickness here. So I'm gonna roll this out number three on the pasta machine. Okay, now you take your cutter, or if you were using your little template, all right, so if you were taking the little template here, what you would do there is you could just take this, uh, pop this out, you just pop that on the top and then just cut around with like a little cutting wheel. Um, you can use also like, for example, you can take a, uh, just a knife and cut around, but be careful if you're working on a plastic surface, don't use like an X-Acto knife or a scalpel. Um, I'm going to just take my cutter here. Just gonna do a little wiggle wiggle. I just usually use my hand here just to rub that out so you get a nice clean cut. And if you were making several of these, you just put these into your plastic flap. Uh, this is a plastic flap that keeps the pedals, it's called multi-flap, keeps the pedals nice and soft. And I had that in a zip top bag because I did this a couple of hours ago ready for the demo. But in my classes, what I'll typically do when my students are cutting out multiple pedals, we just put a sort of a, a damp washcloth or flannel on top of this and it keeps the pedals components uh, cool and moist until they're ready to use them. That also means if you were making flowers and you suddenly had to go and cook dinner or pick the kids up from school or something like that, you could basically, um, you could uh, just put them in there and then put a wet cloth on the top, leave them for a few hours. Now I'm going to use um, a peony veiner. Now this is my 
for our propiony vena, but the thing is, is that you basically can use any generic vena, like a peony or sort of a heavy, you want something with pretty heavy texture, okay? You could use a cymbidium orchid vena, throat vena. Um, as I said, there are lots of options here. Um, so this could be a double-sided vena, or obviously it could be, I'm just using one side of this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna place this into the extra large peony vena. So you see how it's actually just gonna sit down towards the bottom part here. And then when I, when I use, um, basically when I'm using any vein, I always use a cosmetic sponge because your thumb or finger is not, your pressure point's not going to be even, but also you're not going to get obviously the nice veining. So cosmetic sponge I find is much better than, for example, using just a regular, um, like a bath sponge or whatever, because that's a little bit too soft. So just going to just press that over the surface of here. Now I'm not going to vein the back of it because most orchids' throats, the back part of the throat isn't veined, all right? But as I said, this is a double-sided vena, so of course on certain things like peonies, I would use this, all right? So we're gonna take this off of the vena, so you see how you're gonna get this nice veining onto the throat, okay? Once we've done that, we're gonna use a little, um, here, a little tiny pad, all right? So just gonna read through my instructions, just reading, so you can obviously understand this as you go along with this. So for the throat, we're going to, so it says here, pressing on the vein using cosmetic sponge, turn over and place onto the green side of the foam pad and frill around the top half of the throat using a Dresden tool um, on its side, okay? So we're gonna take the, um, so we're gonna then, so we're gonna press, press the a peony vein, then you're gonna press over. So when we do, it's gonna turn it back over. So obviously we're gonna be doing this on the heavy vein side. Now I'm gonna use my Dresden tool, all right? The Dresden tool gets its name from Dresden, the town in Germany. And originally Dresden tools were made from brass, from bone, ivory, um, and uh, this is a plastic one. Many companies have these, all right? I prefer the FMM one. I've always used this. I like the shape of it, but you know, many, many companies, sugar craft companies have this. So we're going to now frill around the top half of the throat using a Dresden tool on its side. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna do the top half. So I'm gonna use my Dresden tool on its side. And the reason why I use it on its side is that I get little small frills. Now, when I, when I started in making sugar flowers at 10 years old, I made for my mom and dad, I made a cake with carnations on and some roses. And I can remember even at 10 years old, it took like several layers of skin off my fingers using a toothpick or a cocktail stick. So when I do frilling, I always use a Dresden tool. On a larger flower, like if I'm doing like a big catalea, like a throat this big, I would use it flat or irises or peonies. But when I'm doing a small compact area, I use the Dresden tool. Remember, this is the veining tool end, this is the Dresden tool end. So that is gonna go around and then what I do here is I'm going to then turn it over to the soft side of the pad and with the Dresden tool, I'm now going to just blend from the outside to the inside. And you see what that does, it integrates the veining into the veining from the, from the um, actual veiner. So you don't have that almost like a defined line there. So remember on the hard side, you're gonna go uh, inside to outside and on the soft side, you're gonna go from the outside to the inside, you see? And that's going to sort of blend that beautifully. Now we're going to pinch two lateral veins down the uh, petals. So I'm gonna use some fine tweezers here. Now you can use pretty much any type of fine tweezer, but it doesn't wanna have teeth on it, because if not, it looks like something's been gnawing at your orchids. And so what we're gonna do here is you're gonna just make, and these are gonna go about two thirds of the way down the throat. So you're gonna just use the tweezers like this, and I'm gonna just make a little pinch here, and another little pinch here. And this is gonna be your pollen tract. So this is almost like the runway. So when obviously uh, a insect goes into there, that's almost like the landing strip, like the runway, okay? So that's gonna be, you see how, so you're gonna get these two, uh, two sausage here, and they wanna go about two thirds of the way down, down here. I'm gonna pop this onto a cosmetic sponge because when I'm actually wrapping this around, I find you want a softer sponge. And we're gonna take your egg white and I'm gonna brush your egg white. So the egg white is going to then to brush about half an inch, 12 millimeters down the center and the two sides. So I'm gonna brush my egg white here and here and here, okay? And then I'm gonna take my dry column. So this is obviously one that I have that's already dry. I'm gonna position that. And then you see I can just pinch my, basically my paste around like this. And then I can just open this up to form my, to form my throat of my orchid, all right? Now, with this uh, orchid, you want to just sort of open this out a little bit, and it has quite a sort of the shape of it, 
and um, you're going to hang this upside down to dry. All right. Now, usually what I do is I just leave it like two or three minutes hanging upside down, and you could just use, like, for example, like a little, this is like a little FMM hanging rack like this. And, uh, but you can just leave it a couple of minutes to dry. And then uh, once it's just started to sort of hold its shape, I'm gonna bring the one in that's dry here. You can, you can then just sort of, once it's held its shape, you can just hold it there and just almost like open it out around you. So you see how the end of it almost like comes out, but this sort of middle part is quite uh, tight, all right? And you'll see that in the photograph, okay? And that is the shape of the orchid throat. So that's how we would make the, the throat. Now moving on to the, um, and of course, you know, you, depending on how many orchids you make, you make as many of those as you need. Now moving on to the, um, now the uh, sepal. So the sepal is your head and legs. So I've rolled out my paste number two here. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the sepals, I'm going to take my paste out of the flap, and I'm going to cut out one of the larger ones and then two of the slightly shorter ones, you see. So you've got two large here. So again, I would just cut this out. Just run over. When I cut, all right, now this paste is quite thick, all right, because when you make a lot of flowers or a lot of uh, foliage, sometimes like succulents, this is pretty much the way I make them. I make them a little thicker, insert the wire, and then I'm actually going to thin the edges to make them nice and thin on the edge. But you get a little bit more of a, a sort of an effect that is going to be more natural, okay? You can, of course, also use a ribbed uh, gro grooved board as well as an alternative. So we're going to cut out one larger and two smaller sepals, place two into the multi flap. I'm going to dip a 28 gauge wire into egg white. All right. Um, I'm using uh, 28 gauge wires here. So it's going to take a 28 gauge wire here. And as I showed, like when I did, uh, Paul and David had me as a guest uh, three weeks ago, I did the wisteria, which you can watch that video on cake flicks. Um, and I use, when I'm working with a lot of small fine wires, I use a magnet, like in my classes, my students have a magnet they put the wires onto. That just keeps you organized. Now, we're going to take the, uh, the paste here. I'm gonna dip your wire into egg white. Okay, so I'm just gonna just dip the wire into my egg white, remove the excess egg. And I'm just using a little bit of cornstarch. Now there's two ways to put the wire in. One is to hold it between your thumb and first finger like this, all right? And just gonna thread the wire into the paddle, into the thickness of the paddle about halfway in. So the wire has gone to about here and mold it around the bottom, okay? And now when I do the set the uh, sepals, or the petals, I'll show you how to do on the pad, all right? But this is the way, and you hold it quite firmly so you force the wire in. So then what we do is you take this all right, I'm just going to get rid of this one at the moment because I've finished with that now and uh, just show you. So then you would then take the next sepal out, put the wire in, the next sepal out, and you just would line these up. As you make them, you line them up into your flap like that. Is that okay, reflection-wise, Scott? All right, and then with your finger, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go around about the top two-thirds to three-quarters of the petals, all right? So what this is doing, this is thinning out the edge because this is really not a frilly orchid, but we want to get that edge nice and thin, all right, so it looks more natural. But this is like how I do when I do succulents, how I do a succulent. And this technique is also when I do things like calla lilies, I use this same technique to thin the edges of a calla lily. So once you've got the three of those to that stage, um, so then we're going to, so using your finger thin around the top two thirds of the petals to create a thinner edge, then one at a time remove and place onto the large or small lily leaf cavity, pressing on top with a cosmetic sponge to vein. The back veiner can be used if desired by pressing on top. But again, as I explained, when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing this orchid, I don't actually use the back veiner, all right? This has got a back veiner with it as well. So this is, um, like a, uh, obviously a lily, uh, this is the lily petal, two sizes, this is the lily leaf. So when you do these sepals, all right, you can use um, the large or the small, they, both, they will both fit in here. And you see, um, these have like a little trough in there, so you just line it up so the little wire will go into the trough here, but you could use large or small. And again, you're just gonna just take your vena and it's gonna press this onto the top, okay? Now, if you're using a groove board, like if you're using a groove, like a cell board or a groove board, the thing is with a groove board is you're gonna have a little ridge. So of course, you, when you press it with your cosmetic sponge, it will basically squash that little ridge out. Okay, so, but as I said, if you're making lilies, of course, you would use the other side of the vena. 
Once we've done that, we're going to uh, then remove from the vena and soften around the back edge to create a soft frilling using medium balling tool, large stick, or the shaft of the companion tool. Again, I'm going to show you traditional method, but you see how this is going to give you the nice veining onto the uh, sapples. Okay, so using a soft side of a pad. Now this is uh, my pad, but you know a lot of you may have like the cell cakes one. It's yellow, yellow. The orange side is a firm side, like my green side. The black, the orange, yellow side is obviously a soft side, like my black side. So traditional method of softening would be done with a balling tool. So this is a uh, medium balling tool, or this is a large stick, and you can see the ends of these tools are comparable. All right, it's what you feel more comfortable with. So you're gonna do this on the back, and you're just gonna go around just gently, half on the paste and half on the pad. We're not making it really frilly, okay? And if you're using um, the stick, you're gonna again, you're gonna use that, and you're gonna go half on the paste, half on the pad. I hold this like I would a pencil um, on a razor on the end of a pencil, like a rubber on the end of a pencil. That's the technique I'm using. And so it really, as I said, is what you prefer. And it's just gonna be softened on the top half of that. And then taking my little um, companion tool, or if you don't have one of these, you could use like a toothpick, a cocktail stick. I'm going to pinch around the shaft of this. So you see how I'm actually pinching around the shaft of the uh, companion tool, okay? Uh, a lot of you may have like the, the cell sticks, which is like a white one. This is, this is also a little bit bigger, but that will also work as well. So basically it's what you have, okay? But you'll see I use this companion tool quite a bit. Now then what I'm gonna do is where the wire is, which is here, I want to just bend this to form a slight curve. So you see how the actual paddle or sepal is gonna be slightly curved. And then what we would then do is you would take this and you would lay this into the crate foam former like this. So you see how it lays into the crate foam former. So it's going to curve like this with the veining obviously up on the top, all right, like that. Um, and then you would continue with the sepals done in the same way. So these are the two skinny ones, all right, I've already taped these ready for assembly. So these will be done in exactly the same way. Now we're gonna move on to your two pedals, which are gonna be like your two arms. And this is almost looks a bit like mistletoe, all right? You could actually even use this cutter for in green and then just not frill it and uh, make these, you could make large mistletoe leaves, all right? So it is, as I said, a, uh, so that is gonna be done. So just to show you how I do those. So here we will take the, this one. And what we're gonna do here, you're gonna cut out one. So remember you cut and I just run my thumb over the top, okay? Just gonna pop this out here because when you're working with your paste a little bit thicker, you need to also make sure you keep your cutters nice and clean as well. All right, so we're just gonna just cut this out, or as I said, use your templates. But you see how you're gonna make a pair, look almost like Bugs Bunny's ears, okay? And uh, again, you're gonna pop one of those into the flap. Now, as I explained, there's the two, the second way you can put the wire in is if you have drama or issues trying to put the wire in like I showed you. Another option you have here is you can take your uh, wire, okay, you dip your wire into egg white, and then what you actually can do here is you take the, just put this on the edge of your pad here, like that, and the wire, you're just going to feel that sort of tickle your finger, and that will just go into the, just going to push this, sorry, get my wire here, there we go, but just going to hold your, hold this on the top here, like so, all right, and just going to, just going to push, push this in here, like so, all right, and you can just push that back in, so don't worry if you're, as long as your wire is not coming out, all right? And you're gonna just mold around the bottom of this. This particular cutter, these ones are quite skinny and not really quite sure, because I didn't design the original cutter, but it's quite wide here, so you can just, just wanna make sure you pinch that so you'll get rid of that um, piece there. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use the Lily um, Vayner, you see? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this onto the, large lily venus. You see what I'm actually doing here is I'm using the edge of the lily vena here and the second one would go here because obviously the edge of it is curved. If you put it in the straight, if you put it in the middle like the other ones, the lines would go. So you actually work into the edge of your vena. So you just actually push that right the way to the edge and then you're going to then just push that in here like so. All right. Also remember, when you dip white wire into egg white, all right, white wire, um, it's a little bit like it makes it wet. So the thing is, it will become translucent 
um, and once it dries, okay, sort of it's obviously translucent now, it's wet, but once that paper dries inside there, they will become really not noticeable, okay? Now, the other option you can use for softening is to use the little, um, as I said, companion tool, which is this small tool here, and, sorry, just forgot to put my, and then soften, you'd obviously soften that in the same way, just trying to get through everything, but then you were then also just going to, just going to go around here with your tool, and you're just going to just soften. You can also do this on your finger as well. So you can actually use your little small stick here just as a sort of a softening tool. All right, so same, same sort of concept. You'll have this nice um, softening. And then you're going to then just going to pinch that. But as I said, you still would thin that out in the um, here like that. So you're just going to pinch the hollow that. And again, you're just going to bend the wire slightly. And you see then these two will go on to the and then you put those, so when you actually put those on, you put them like I've shown, like you can see here. So they're almost like curving following the shape of the crepe foam. All right, this type of former is called crepe foam former. Um, and uh, you know, like a lot of places sell this, it's just they'll use a lot in packaging and stuff. But I use this a lot to dry flower petals in, all right? Again, I'm sure this was available when I was 16 years old, but probably didn't know what it was. And of course, that's why I started using, I said, Coke cans, because it was sort of an easy alternative and something that you could um, obviously have easily for, uh, for the, um, making the petals, the templates. So that's uh, going to be your uh, petals, all right? So now the buds, when we make the buds, we're going to take a 26 gauge wire going to use half width light green floral tape, make a floral tape bud five times H times five. Now this is a teaching abbreviation I use. And what that means is that uh, it is a, uh, when we have, um, when we, you do five times, that means how many times you go around the end of the wire with your floral tape, and then you hook it, and then you go around an additional five times, all right? And if you watch any of my videos, you see. Now again, this is a teaching method that I use a lot and developed many, many years ago. Because again, when I made my first sugar flowers, I was very frustrated they kept coming off the end of the wire. Because in the instructions, it just said to hook the wire. That was actually for the carnations I made at 10 years old. I found out when I started developing this in classes. So this is what I use now when I make carnations. And most flowers where I'm making a bud or a ball, I use a floral tape bud. I'm using half width floral tape. So you cut this with a pair of scissors or a cutter. And uh, you want to stretch your tape a little bit first to make it sticky. We're going to hold the wire between your thumb and first finger. I'm left-handed, so a right-handed, so between my left thumb and first finger. I'm just going to go around once to get started, and then we're going to go two, three, four, five. So we're going to go five times. Because this is not a real strong wire, you can just fold that over with your fingers, or obviously on a stronger wire, you'd use a pair of pliers. So we go five times hook, okay, and then five times one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to continue down the wire. So when we're doing flowers that have a bulbous end, like this particular bud, this just gives a really nice shape to it. And um, let's finish with the cutters now. <clears throat> and just remember, if you uh, have any questions, you know, I'm going to answer all the questions afterwards, just so we can get through everything. So, uh, but just if you have any questions, anything you'd like to ask me, you know, just put that in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those this afternoon. And uh, so we're going to, for the buds, we're going to use a number six and number seven. Okay, so this is going to be a number six size. So on your size guide and a number seven size. So again, you see how you've got like one third below the hole and two thirds above the top. All right. So again, if you're making multiple buds, you just make one bud like number seven, then you can make another two or three, and then just keep those underneath a little pot to stop them drying. A lot of times I will use a little silicone mat because what that does, the silicone mat and then the little cup or glass will basically form almost like an airtight seal. Okay, so the air won't get to that. Now I'm going to show you the big bud, all right? So you're going to take your paste. Again, I'm just going to condition this. So I'm going to take a little bit of shortening just to relax the paste, okay? And um, then what we're going to do here is on your buds, so it says you're going to brush floral tape bud with egg white and insert into the ball, mold to shape. Now the number six would be one and a quarter inch, 32 millimeters. The number seven will be one and three quarter inches or 45 millimeters, all right? And I've done the handout for you because in all of my classes, I give full uh, instructions to my students. So when you want to go home and reproduce these, um, you can easily do that. Plus also you don't have to write all of this down. So we're going to insert the wire into the paste and then using a little cornstarch, corn flour, 
I'm going to now start to work the piece down like this. You see how I'm using? Technique wise, if you've ever milked a cow or a goat, okay, that's basically the technique you're using. If you haven't, you'll be able to after watching this video. When I, t I tell my students when they come to class, uh, they will be able to milk a cow or a goat after class. But it's basically a stretching and pulling technique, okay? And um, so this one wants to be about one and three quarter inches, all right? So that's about one and three quarter, so just a little bit more here, a little bit obviously bulbous end here, so about. All right, so about one and three quarter inches or about 45 millimeters in length, okay? Now you see, because the floral tape bud is inside this, it's going to also help to form a nice shape. So on flowers like Stephanotis and whatever, I use this. So now I'm gonna take my, gonna take my uh, um, companion tool and I'm gonna divide the top into three. So I'm just gonna use this little tool. Now this is, commonly now being known as the Nick stick, or as it's in my signature green color. And it's a wonderful little tool for texture, um, figure modeling, and uh, also it's great for like when you flood cookies with royal icing. So you're actually gonna cut in quite deeply on those first three, you see? So you wanna create the three lobes, and then I'm gonna actually just use this to now almost just like scratch onto the bud, because this will emulate what the veiner has done because basically this is like an unopened flower, okay? So this will give you the little bit of texture on there, okay? So we're going to take the, um, so that will be your bud, and then you're going to bend this. So what I do is I use the curve of my thumb, and I just hold this and just gonna bend it over the curve of my thumb, okay? So what this is gonna do is gonna give you this nice curve, you see, all right? So it's not too severe. And then the small one, this one I've already got colored, but you see that's gonna be the small size one there. All right, this is all very almost identical to like two rose buds. Um, so there are many buds that have the same sort of uh, look as that. So that's how we do the buds. And I'm gonna show you obviously all the making and I'll show you the coloring um, at the end. So then we're gonna now move on to the um, leaves. Now for the leaves, we're using green paste. And uh, I'm gonna use the um, lily mold, all right? So this is the lily cavity here lily leaf. So you'd use a number eight small for the small leaf and number 10 small for the uh, bigger leaf. And I'm using the smaller leaf. But if you were doing a big spray of these, you could also do some uh, large leaf. Now this is a little bit different for those of you who are not familiar with the size guide. So sometimes in my teaching, it will tell you to use basically a small size. So this, this means sort of this, this is the, um, sorry, that's the vanilla bean one here. There you go. So here you would make the so this is gonna be the eight small. So if you're making a small, so basically what this needs to do, your paste needs to be small enough that it will just go through the hole, all right? So, so you see, this is actually just gonna physically go through the hole. And that would be for the small leaf. And if you're making the bigger leaf, you'd use a number 10 small, okay? So it's just that sometimes you will have in your directions, it will say like, uh, like an eight small, and sometimes it would just say like a number seven. So remember, if it just says number seven, number five, number nine, it means one third below, two thirds above. If it says small, it physically means you actually is a small, it uh, goes through the hole. So we're going to, for the leaves, you're gonna take a number eight small moss green paste, roll into a sausage, two thirds of the length of the lily cavity. Now, if you're working with paste and it's a little sticky, you can put a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable fat, shortening, white fat shortening, uh, if you're having problem with it sticking, all right? But usually you're gonna make this about two thirds of the length of the leaf, okay? And then you can just pop a little cornstarch, cornflour on the top of that. And I'm gonna actually use the back part of the vena just to sort of press it into the cavity. You see, so what that does, that, gives, that gets my paste into there to start off with. And then with my cosmetic sponge, I'm gonna use this to come to the edge of the uh, leaf. Now with Flower Pro, this is pretty much how I finish off most of my flower. And that enables me to get that sort of thinness on the edge, which would be characteristic if you were using a cutter. All right, so then we're going to take now a 26 gauge wire or a 24 gauge wire for um, the big one. And we're gonna dip this into egg white. And you see, this is really very much a foolproof method because you go into the little channel here. So you see the little channel, all right? And so when we go into that little channel, your wire is forced to go in the right place, you see? You really can't mess up on, on that because it's going to go uh, with the channel. It's gonna go right in the center. It makes it very, very easy. And then we're gonna take the back vena, all right? Now you're gonna line the back vena up. So this is gonna be lined up. So the little V shape at the bottom here, the wire is gonna be visible in that little V shape. And you're just gonna press onto the back here 
like so. So it's going to give you the nice veining onto the back. And then when we take this out of the cavity, you'll see how you have this little leaf. So this is basically a small lily leaf, okay? Again, we're going to soften this. So you're going to use your um, technique. So you're going to then um, gonna take, take this out, mold to the base, and then you're going to soften the edge on the leaves uh, as for the sepals and petals, all right? So basically you can use exactly the same technique. Because this is a little bit bigger, you can use a big balling tool or you could use a medium pin, you see, because these are again both comparable. Or you could use your companion tool technique, which I showed you. So again, and when I'm using this, what I do is I just roll like this. So you see how I'm actually using the tool at an angle because it's quite flexible, this little tool going to get a knife. Now what I do like about, I would say, this technique is you don't erase the veining. With a balling tool, it's going to smooth that, okay? So it does give a slightly different effect. We're going to take your companion tool. We're going to pinch this around the bottom, and then we're going to actually pinch this like a taco, all right? So like a Mexican taco, not Japanese taco, which is obviously octopus, okay? So you're going to make like a taco shell, and then we're going to take, this is what I call a multiformer, all right, so it's like basically this is uh, used for um, ice tubes, all right? So uh, it's used for ice tubes for water bottles, and this works really, really well. As a, and you see how the petal actually dries. So I use this for things like Strelitzia, the bird of paradise. I use it for a lot of things that I want to dry in that sort of V shape, okay? So I'm just going to pop that to one side. So that's going to be the leaf. And then final one is going to be the vanilla pod, all right? So with the vanilla pod, we're going to take a 24 gauge wire, gonna make a small hook on the end. All right, so just gonna make a little tiny hook on the end here. So just a little tiny hook. And then I've already got the paste measured here. So this is gonna be number seven of moss green. And you're gonna just insert this into a sausage and we're gonna make this about two and a half inches. So remember, this is just a regular number seven size. All right, so one third below, two thirds above. So pretty much everything I've shown you is regular except for the, um, obviously on the uh, leaves, they were eight small and 10 small, okay? So we're gonna just take this, and again, just gonna condition this, gonna make a little, here, it's gonna roll this into a little sausage, here like this, and then gonna just gonna dip my hook into egg white. And you're gonna insert this all the way to the end. So you're actually putting the hook all the way to the end here. We're then just going to stretch this down, so like milking the cow or the goat technique, until this wants to be, as I said, about two and a half inches. So this wants to be um, about 6.5 centimeters, okay? So about two and a half inches, about 6.5 centimeters. It wants to be a little tapered at this end, a little slightly pointed on there. And it does, but it's like a sausage, but a slightly pointed end, slightly bulbous end, all right? And then, as I said, a little bit tapered here. All right, and then you can use uh, like a cutting wheel. Um, sorry, I just need to grab my cutting wheel here. There we go. Sorry, everybody, I had one out earlier. I don't know where it's gone to. But uh, so you're gonna use a cutting wheel. So this is like a PME cutting wheel, and you're gonna just cut down the middle here, like that. And you see how that's gonna give you that sort of lateral cut down the middle here, like so. And then you're going to bend this just carefully over your finger and then reshape that. So you're going to get the actual vanilla pod, you see? So that's how we do the little pod of the vanilla, okay? So that's the making part. So after you've seen me, um, obviously, this uh, video, you can obviously make some columns. And a little bit later, you could obviously put the things together. So I'm going to show you now how we uh, put the orchid, how we do all of the assembly. And then I'm going to show you the coloring to finish up with. Now, we're going to start off by, first of all, um, we're going to um, going to tape the components. All right, so we're going to use here some quarter width floral tape. So this is cut with a tape cutter or pair of scissors, so it's like quarter width. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit thinner. And the reason is we don't want to add a lot of bulk to this. All right, so when you're doing flowers, some flowers we use half width tape. But so when we do this, when we do taping, all right, we're going to start, take the floral tape, going to be about two and a half centimeters down. I'm going to go round with my fingers, and I'm just going to slide the floral tape up to the bottom. And that way, you see, you'll have a perfect start. You don't get like a big lump there. I'm just going to show you here. If your fingers are a little sticky, you can just use a little bit of uh, cornstarch, corn flour as needed. So you're just going to go round here. So you're going to use your quarter width. 
Remember, these are on 28 gauge wire, so they're quite soft. And just you see how you just slide this tape up to the bottom like this, and you see then you won't have a, an ugly start to your taping. Now, the other thing is, is that just while I'm working on this, a lot of my students, you know, realize that when they're doing flowers, like when they come to class, that sometimes the reason why they've had issues and drama with putting flowers together is they don't tape the components. Because floral tape is sticky, what it means is that when you attach one to the other, it's going to obviously hold its shape. Now, um, and it's not going to twist around. So you're going to take the, th the throat, I'm going to bend the throat out a little bit. So we're going to put in, first of all, the first sepal, which is going to be your head. All right, so in the diagram there, so this is like going to be your head. And so this is the way I always put my uh, orchids together. So I do my head, my head and my um, throat together first. You take those together first. All right, then you're going to put in your legs. Now remember, these are on 28 gauge wire, so that's very, a uh, very fine wire. So I would generally use tweezers to attach those. And then we're going to put in the two legs. Now, and the legs will go where you're naturally where your legs are, okay, unless you're doing the splits. All right, so they're going to go there like so. And you can actually also use your floral tape going around like this, all right? So we're going to have your head, and this will be your two legs here like so, okay? Then we're going to put the arms. So the arms are going to go in, and your arms will go in naturally. Obviously, you've got one to the right and one to the left, so make sure you get them the right way around. So you'll see that in the photograph and on the diagram here. But you see how it's going to go here. And then the other one is going to sit here like this. All right, so there's going to just going to be your two arms are going to go into there. But you see how you will have a nice, um, you have a nice stem. You don't have an ugly bottom uh, where you have a lot of bulk there, you see. So you're just going to go around with your floral tape. All right, and then you can just arrange your, so you see how this is going to give you the shape of the flower. And then we're going to add a 22 gauge wire. So then on your flower, so if you come back to your um, flower on the uh, here. So after the petals there, it says that, uh, so on the petals, it says that uh, you can tape everything as photograph, adding a 22 gauge wire. So then we're going to take a 22 gauge wire. So with a 22 gauge wire, I'm going to take that and then you can that you can add with half width tape. So you just tape down just a little way with a quarter width tape, and then we can actually just put the wire, it doesn't need to go right the way to the top, but this is just going to then just extend the main stem. And you need to keep tension on the tape, so just like if you were doing knitting or crocheting, keeping knitting, uh, tension on there, okay? So that is how you would do, and then you're gonna bend your orchid forward, because orchids sit like this, so they will actually sit forward like so, you see? So that's how you have your orchid. Now your two buds will be assembled onto a 22 gauge wire as well. So I'm just going to have those, just one to the right, one to the left. Okay, I'm just going to use, because remember those were just being taped with half width, and then we're just going to tape those down like so. Okay, and then we're going to do the, the leaves need to be taped. So these would just be taped with half width green tape. All right, so that's going to be your leaves there. And then um, also your vanilla pod will be taped with some half width green as well. So just going to just tape him down with some half width green. This is the dry one. Remember, everything I'm showing you put in together is dry, okay? I actually made these yesterday. Now, moving on to coloring. All right, so just want to mention, you know, dusting powders are something that there are many brands of dusting powder, all right? So it's just basically, you know, when you look at the photograph, you just need to sort of find something that's sort of comparable in your country that you live in. Um, and uh, remember also, if the color you're using is too strong, meaning it's too bright, then all you need to do is you add corn flour or cornstarch. So the more corn flour or cornstarch you add to this, the lighter the color will become, okay? So you can uh, use that. So I'm gonna start off, first of all, with the orchid. Okay, so for the coloring, that's going to be where the petals are. It says, you're going to dust over the sepals and petals with light green, light apple, and then the throat is dusted with pale Harrison's yellow. So this is a color, light apple color, so this is a pale green. But I said, if you have something that's a little bit stronger, like those of you in the UK, like Sugar Flare, have a spring green color, but it's a lot more vibrant than this. Just use that and then put some corn flour into it, all right? So what we're going to do here is going to take this, and I'm just going to just brush this over, 
and you see how because I started off with cream it's going to give you this really really pretty color okay whereas if I started off with white it would look very stark okay so the green is a really good choice when you're doing these pale colors okay so just going to use and remember never take color straight from the pot you're always going to take the color from the and you're just going to put a little bit of this and this doesn't have to be sort of like solid all over because it's almost like and when you actually look as i said on google if you did a search on vanilla orchid you'll see how the color varies quite a lot with the different vanilla orchids. some of them are more creamy color but you have this really really nice soft greeny color you see onto here I'm also going to use that on the buds as well. So this is going to go on to the top of the buds. All right. And uh, so on top of the bud there, you're going to put that, that green color. So that's the soft green. Now, of course, you could take this and you could put it back into the container um, and then go on to the next color. All right. So next color we're going to use is going to then be, um, so we're going to use Harrison's yellow. So Harrison's yellow is a golden yellow. Harrison's yellow is actually the name of the yellow rose of Texas. So, you know, the, the song, the yellow rose of Texas, the actual variety of rose that was taken by um, across the prairies was the Harrison's yellow, which is AKA the yellow rose of Texas. So this is a dark golden yellow color, very pretty on a yellow, yellow rose. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to then, um, then the throat is dusted with pale Harrison's yellow dust. So you're going to use that. So you can actually open this up a little bit so you can access this. Okay, so you're just going, to, just going to put a little bit of the, so this is going to be the Harrison. And I'm brushing from the source away from the source. So I'm going to just brush from the outside to the inside. I'm going to use my Harrison's yellow here. And this is going to just sort of be brushed onto the throat part of the orchid, all right? So that's going to just be brushed just onto the throat part of the orchid. Next, we're going to take some orange. So this is orange color here. So this is an orange dust. And then this is going to be dusted, then the orange in the center. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put the orange just right in the middle of the orchid. And again, I want the color to basically to dissipate. So it's coming from the source away from the source. So I'm going to just brush that in. So it's going to come a little bit down. So you see how you're going to get this nice color here like so, okay? And then finally, a little prairie green is dusted on the center of the throat. So prairie green, and prairie green is actually, when I did the, many years ago, I did a demonstration on the Yellow Rose of Texas. So prairie green comes from the prairies, obviously, when the settlers came to the United States and crossed over to the west of the U.S., you know, the, the prairies were what they crossed. So we're going to take a little bit of prairie green here, and I'm just going to put a little touch of prairie green here, right in that center of the throat. And then you're going to the base of the sepals, petals, and throat. So then you're going to use just a little bit of prairie green. It's going to be dusted here. So a little bit of prairie green. So I'm rushing this a little bit because I've just got a couple more minutes. And because we have a very, very exciting announcement um, coming up in a few minutes' time. So some super exciting news on uh, Cake Flicks. So, so we're going to put the prairie green there like that. And then I would do the same on the buds. So a little bit of prairie is going to be done onto the buds as well. So a little bit of prairie green. And then we take, uh, this is apple green. So this is a, a sort of a darker green. So this is an apple green. So you can see quite a lot stronger. And I'm going to put that just at the very, very bottom here. And I would do the same here, just on the very, very base. So really where the floral tape meets the flower will have this, um, as I said, soft green color. Okay. Now the um, vanilla pod is going to be dusted with apple green. So you're going to just dust that with apple green all over. I'm going to pop my steamer on. So I'm just going to put apple green all over here. So that's just going to brighten this up. And then we're also going to use apple green on my leaves as well all over. Now usually I would put gloves on for this um, when I teach, but it just, it's a little bit uh, easier just to show you without the gloves on. Just gonna brush apple green all over, okay? And then the final thing is on the, we're gonna use a little bit of chocolate. So this is some chocolate brown color. So chocolate, a little bit of chocolate brown. And I'm going to use a flat brush and this is gonna just be brushed down the actual little cut on the bean. So you see where you actually have a little cut, you're gonna put that down there like so. All right, just going to, my table a little wipe we got and then we're going to just going to steam 
All right, we're going to steam the flowers. So we're going to just going to steam the flower. This is just going to just sort of set the color on the flower and on the buds. All right, and then the pod as well, you're going to just steam that. All right, we don't have to steam the leaves because the, and then those are going to actually have, we're going to put some spray, la I'm going to put some spray lacquer onto the, onto the uh, pod and onto the leaves. All right. Now remember when you're using a spray lacquer or you can also use a leaf glaze, which is like a, basically a diluted, uh, diluted glaze. You just want to make sure that you don't, um, you do this on a protected surface. Okay. So just a little bit of, there we go. A little spray there like so. And then very, very quickly, just going to show you the aerial root. Now then last part of the orchid is going to be the aerial root that is going to be done I do a lot of fun things with floral tape. If you watch my um, video from my wisteria, you know, I did branches. But here, you're going to just twist your floral tape, all right, like this. So just like when we make a tendril for a grape or a sweet pea, you're just going to twist this like so. So it's just literally just twisted floral tape. And then what I do here is I take my, and you're just going to pop that around a stick. So you can just go around a stick like this. And this was going to give you your sort of like aerial root, you see? You do these in white. So for final assembly, sorry David, I hope I'm okay just for two minutes, okay? I'm going to bend this over, so it's going to pop this in. So you see that's going to give me my aerial, that will give me my aerial root. And then taking my floral tape. So just going to take your floral tape here, just going to tape down here just a little ways. And then again you can just add a 22 gauge wire. So just the pod. So basically you've got the pod and an aerial root. But of course this is just, um, if I was teaching this in a class, this is typically how I do when I teach most of my classes. My students learn all the components, all right? So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have it put together like this. And then what we would do then, I'm just going to use a little bit of pale chocolate. So this is the chocolate brown but with corn flour or corn starch, all right? And the pale chocolate is going to go sort of like at the bottom here. So you're going to get this sort of pale chocolate brown on the floral tape. And then we're going to use a little bit of the prairie green, uh, which is the green here. So a little bit of prairie is going to just be dusted then in the middle area here. So this is a little in the middle area. But I just wanted to make sure that I showed you all of the components, all right? And so then you have your pod here. And then we can put in the buds. It's going to take this down. And then we're going to put in the to the pod and then we're going to put in the orchid so here we have the orchid here and then i'm going to put in the leaves so i've got the leaves so i've obviously got the other one i was already being pre-done and then i have another and all i did there is i just made like a long piece all right folded it in half and then i've obviously got the the uh the aerial roots here and this just, you know, most, a lot of orchid family have aerial roots, but this is just a nice way. And literally all I do there is I just tape that in. You don't have to wire it. You just tape that into the, into the spray here, like so. And then it's going to just tape down. And then once you tape down, I'm just going to take some wire cutters. And you can also, if you wanted to, you could actually uh, steam it at this point. So you can also steam it at this point here. And then you see how you'll have your um, orchid here. And you can see these are obviously a couple of, so it shows you the, the orchid sprays. But see, you could do a beautiful spray, like for example, on an anniversary cake, um, you know, 50th wedding anniversary cake or whatever. So thank you, everybody. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed the demonstration on the vanilla orchid. I'd like to thank David and Paul for their amazing support of our community during this difficult time. And hopefully this is bringing a little bit of fun to you. And I uh, hope you will have enjoyed making this orchid. And as I said, any questions, I'm going to answer those straight away and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. So take care. Sweet wishes, everybody. Bye-bye.